Calhoun here with Off the Hook Sports, joined by former Georgia Bulldogs quarterback, 2005 SEC champion, DJ Shockley, now Fox 5 Atlanta sports anchor and Georgia radio sideline reporter. DJ, how you doing? Good, man. Appreciate you having me. Thanks. Thanks for being here. So we cover a lot of Tennessee Vols news. All right. And you were in a very similar situation to Joe Milton because you had to take over for David Green yep. after sitting behind him for three years. And all you did was win an SEC title. So <laughs> <laughs> what advice would you have for Joe? You know, I think Joe's been in a good spot because he's played a lot of ball already. Um, obviously, he's a guy who's mature. He's been around. He's played, you know, tons of football. And I think he's a smart, big kid, can throw it, can sling it. But he also, like you mentioned, he played behind a guy who played a lot of football, too, who did pretty well last year in Henny Hooker. Uh, so you think about Joe coming into this season, and now everything is his. You don't have to worry about anybody else. You don't have to worry about nobody taking his job. He is a guy that's been there and done it. I just say beat him. You don't need to do anything extra. It's a reason why you're going to be the guy this year. I had to take that same mantra as, hey, take it one play at a time, one game at a time, but also realize this is your moment. And I think he'll be just fine. I've seen him play. He's a, a, a really good player. He's going to be fun to watch. Yeah, so what are some things that he could do? You know, the biggest concern was his accuracy. He could throw it out of the building, as we've seen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> how do uh, quarterbacks like, like, the, like him, how do they – I guess, measure their accuracy? Is it more about timing or is it more about actually putting the ball in the right spot? It's, it's a lot about timing, too, because you got to get that time on task with receivers. And it's all about trust, too, because you got to understand when a guy's coming out of his break, you got to understand he's going to come out of that break on time and you got to trust to throw it. And the other part about it is it's upstairs mentally knowing exactly where you want to go with the football, knowing what a defense is going to do and trusting what your eyes see. And then the last part, I think, it comes from below. A lot of people forget – that your feet are attached to your upper body, your feet are attached to accuracy when it comes to a quarterback. Now, take Patrick Mahomes, take uh, Stafford, some of those guys out who can throw from all these different angles. Uh, but the most accurate guys are the ones who have a good base about them and they step to the target. They know exactly where to go to the football. But I think the number one thing has to be the trust with the guys you're throwing to. Because if you don't trust it, you're going to be late. Or if you don't trust it, you're going to wait a little bit or you're going to just be, you know, trying to give him a chance. I think you have to trust the guy that you're throwing to, and that ultimately will give you that timing and accuracy you need. What type of pressure do you think Tennessee could apply to Georgia this year? Because last year, this it wasn't even a game. It yeah. was 27 to 13, but it was really like 45 to nothing. Georgia yeah. wanted it to be. Yeah. Do you think that Tennessee could play, make it a lot closer this year being in Knoxville? I think that plays a huge part. I mean, obviously – the home field advantage last year for Georgia was huge. I mean, that environment was unreal. And obviously, Tennessee plays in front of 100-plus. But when you're on the road and everybody's against you and things may not go your way, it's hard to depend on your crowd to get you going. And in that instance, it was tough on Tennessee. I think when you go into Knoxville, that makes it already tough. It's a loud environment. They're going to be playing Rocky Top a thousand times. You know that. And they have something to feed off of. So I think absolutely – that home field advantage plays a bigger role when you're playing at home. Uh, Tennessee is talented. What they do on offense, Heifel's got them going. I mean, that, the speed, the tempo, all that kind of stuff, it gives a lot of teams issues. And you think about going on the road, it may be, you know, maybe not be as loud when they're on the field, but on the other side of it, the communication for an offense, for an opposing team is a little bit different. So that definitely will play a factor. And I think just the fact you have a guy and, and Joe who has been there and done it, veteran of it, and then you got Hypo, who know he's going to drop a great game plan. It's going to be a fun game. Well, I distinctly remember somebody I'm sitting next to has a pretty good track record of shutting up Tennessee fans in their <laughs> home stadium. Because I think you did that in 2005, didn't we you? We did. We, we, we actually went in Knoxville, got a win. Uh, still a tough ball game. Um, but it's I love playing there. It was a great place to be. I mean, obviously, your fans are all against you. But you love. You walk out the tunnel, and it goes straight up. People up all up on you. And, uh, but – you know, Sea of Orange, maybe I could do a, a little bit out with, but uh, it was cool to play there. What do you think of – yeah, do you think last year's game with Tennessee on the road, do you think Eric Ainge's comments had an impact on Georgia fans wanting to uh, – oh, absolutely. A little bit on? Absolutely. I mean, it was loud and clear. I mean, he kept saying it. And <laughs> Georgia fans, yeah, they're not like Kirby or they're not like some of the players who can't really talk about it, but they know about it too. But the fans, they absolutely hear it. They see it. And a guy who's been there and done it, you think – we have a little bit more respect for, you know, the opponent he's playing against or the opponent he played against and know what it's like there and what it does for Bill, 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 Bill more material. It's going to be interesting to see uh, if something like that happens again or if he brings up anything like he talked about last year. But 
I don't think he will. Either. Yeah, I don't think he will either. <laughs> I will say though, it kind of makes me miss if you remember the early two thousands. That I feel like Tennessee and Georgia hatred for each other was at an all time high when you were playing there. Oh yeah. At that time. Oh yeah. Because I remember Casey Clawson making the comments if I had to play, we would have won by two touchdowns. No doubt. And then the Jason Allen flag in the middle of the G. And then you guys the next year were laughing at Tennessee players because they were trying to cover the T. No doubt. Y'all beat. No doubt. I mean, it was one of those rivalries that you love. And that's why you like it. That's why the SEC is cool. And usually, you know, a lot of players that are on Tennessee team probably could have went to Georgia. Georgia guys probably could have went to Tennessee. I mean, you go to all these different camps together. You kind of grow up together because, you know, you're, you're kind of close. So, uh, there's definitely a big rivalry between Georgia and Tennessee that will always be there. And uh, for years, it always went back and forth, uh, even to the Jamal Lewis days. So it's one of those times where, you know, you love playing that game. Yes, Jamal Lewis, Kosey Coleman, Deion Graham. Oh, we call them yeah. The, we call them the Georgia Three at Knoxville because yeah. that was the heights for Tennessee. To no, get doubt. <laughs> no doubt. No doubt. No um, doubt. So – what do you think going forward with the SEC? You know, it's going to be 16 teams. I, I think Tennessee Georgia is a rivalry that's on the chopping block, unfortunately. Yeah. But do you think it? You think it's still going to be fine because it looks like they're going to play each other every other year, and all the teams are at least going to play yeah. each other every other year. So do you think the rivalry can still last if it's every other year? I think it can because once you get into that game and you realize how big of a game it is, which it always usually is, that rivalry instantly comes back. You love to play it every year, but you understand how the realignment is going to happen and how they want everybody to play everybody like you just mentioned. So you understand that part of it. Um, but I don't think that's one that can ever go away because you remember the past so vividly that it's hard to just be like, okay, oh, we didn't play them this year or last year, but we're not going to really be in. No, you're going to be into it. When you see that big T, you see the orange, they see the G, it's an instant rivalry, regardless of how long it's been you played them. Yep, and when you – funny enough, I was looking back, you have you have a connection to Hendon Hooker too, not just Joe Milton because Hendon Hooker obviously got hurt against South Carolina. Mm. And I still maintain, had you not gotten hurt, you're going undefeated in 2005 in the regular yeah. season. Does that ever – is that something that sticks with the college quarterback for like the rest of the – Oh, no doubt. Life? It's, it's almost – I mean, as a quarterback, you remember the throws you miss. You, you remember the losses. You remember opportunities that, you know, you wish you could have played in. So, Hooker absolutely will go back and, you know, five, ten years down the road when he can look back on it and be like, man, I didn't get hurt this way. All right, we had a, maybe had another chance to play Georgia again, maybe in the, you know, in the, in the playoffs and make it in, you know. So, he absolutely will run that through his brain again. I still do it from time. I got teammates who still remind me of, if you didn't get hurt, we got a chance to play for it, Natty. I mean, so, it definitely still happens. Dudes don't ever forget it. Yep. I also maintain that if you had played the full game against Tennessee in 2004, <laughs> y'all would have won because I do remember you throwing a touchdown against Tennessee we in 2004. Did. Yeah, we had a good game. It was fun playing it. I mean, you know, hey, can't do nothing about it now, but, hey, it was fun playing it. DJ, thanks so much for stopping by. My pleasure, man. Really I really appreciate, appreciate it. it. This has been DJ Shockley with Off the Book Sports.